In a Facebook group that I'm a part of, someone asked the question, how do I design a flexible laminate? Which on its surface might sound like an interesting question. Why would you ever want to design something that's flexible? Why, would you, why not make it as stiff and strong as possible? Well, there are times when you absolutely do want flexibility without sacrificing strength. Now some of you might be confused, well, aren't flexibility and strength the same thing? I will address that in just a minute because they are not. But that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to show you how to design a laminate that is strong, but also flexible. In his case, the application was a bow for a bow and arrow. You want the limbs of the bow to be flexible enough that you can draw the bow back, but you want them to be strong enough that they don't break when you do so. If the bow is too stiff, you can't draw far enough back and you can't actually put enough energy into the arrow. Therefore, you want it to be somewhat flexible. But before we get into that, it's worth taking just a moment to clarify the difference between stiffness and strength. I want you to pretend that we have a beam that's glued to a wall. It sticks out, it's cantilevered out, and you have a force that you're going to apply on the end, the force called F. Now, as you apply that force, the beam is going to deflect, right? No matter how stiff or strong this beam is, it's going to bend some. And we're going to call that distance that it deflects D. Now, as we increase the force F, it's going to deflect more and more and more. It's going to bend more and more and more until eventually it does break. Now, strength is a measure of how much force you can apply before it breaks. Stiffness, on the other hand, is how much it deflects for a given amount of force. So you can have a laminate that is very, very strong, can take a lot of force, but it's gonna flex a lot before it finally breaks. You can also have a laminate that doesn't flex very much, but is incredibly weak. Now let's talk about how to design a beam that is flexible and strong. And to do that, we're gonna dive into just a little bit of math. Bear with me for just a moment. It might be confusing, but I promise this will make sense. If we were to look at a cross section of this beam, it's going to have a height and it's going to have a width. Now, if you wanted to determine the stress in this beam, you would do that thusly. This is the symbol for stress, equals six times the force times the length of the beam, that's this dimension here, divided by the width times the height squared. That's the formula. There won't be a test, don't worry about that. This will make sense, okay? Now, if we wanted to look at the deflection, the deflection is equal to four times the force times the length cubed over the width times the height cubed. I made a small mistake somewhere in there. You're supposed to have the stiffness of the material, but that, that doesn't matter. Don't worry about the math. Don't worry about the math. What matters, what matters is this right here. And here's why. You look at the stress, this is the strength of the part. You look at the H, the H is squared. If you look at the, the deflection, the H is cubed. So what that means is if we were to take and double the height of this beam, everything else stays the same. All the other dimensions, everything stays the same. If you just double the height, so double the height, the stress is going to be h squared, so 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be 1 fourth, 1 fourth the stress that it would be before. The deflection is going to be h cubed, so it's 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. So it's 1 eighth, I don't know if you can see that, 1 eighth the amount of deflection. So doubling the height gave us 1 quarter the stress and 1 eighth the deflection. So it is 4 times stronger, but it is 8 times stiffer. Just by doubling the height. And if you made it 3 times taller, it's going to be 9 times stronger, but 27 times as stiff. So if you want to make a beam that is strong but flexible, then you want it to be flat and wide. Because you look at the width of the beam, the width is not squared or cubed on both of them. Both the strength and the stiffness increase together as you increase the width. So what you would generally tend to want to do then, if you want a beam that is strong, but also very flexible, 
You want it to be very wide and very short. You want a beam that looks perhaps more like this. Does that make sense? I hope so. Now there's one other thing I'd like to cover in this that I think is very, very relevant. And that is if you want a flexible beam, you're not going to put core into your laminate. Why not? It's because of this. The reason we put core in a laminate is this. If you were to look at this, uh, at this beam, you just take a section of this beam out. Okay, this is just, I, I cut a section here and it's right here. So you're bending this beam, it's being bent like this. Right, you can just picture it bending. If you were to take a cross section there and you look at the stress across the width of this beam, the stress is going to form something like this, where at the top, it's being pulled on. On the bottom, it's being pushed together. And so, and the stresses are highest at the bottom and at the top. Right here in the middle, it's not doing anything. That material is doing essentially nothing. Now, that's not completely true because it is taking some shear, but that's very minimal. When you're talking about bending a beam, really, the top and the bottom are doing all of the work. And so what we could do, if we wanted to make this, this beam lighter, is rather than having it be solid carbon fiber all the way throughout, what if we replace the middle section with something that's very lightweight and not as strong, but it doesn't need to be as strong because the stresses right here in the middle are so low. That's what core is. That's where core comes into play. We take a very lightweight material and we put that right in the middle, sandwiched between two plates of carbon fiber. The carbon fiber is taking all of the stress and all that foam sandwich is doing, or that honeycomb sandwich, all that's doing is it's just spreading the top layers and the bottom layers farther and farther apart to give it additional strength and stiffness. And so if that is the purpose for core, is to spread them apart, make your beam taller without adding additional weight, then why would you want to add core for something that's supposed to be flexible? If you want lots of flex, the core only serves to stiffen your laminate. The other issue with adding core to it is you have another failure mode and that is it could peel. You can have the face sheets these can peel right along this bond line between the core and the face sheets. Why add an additional failure mode if you don't have to? If you don't need it for this flexibility anyway? So there you have it. That's flexibility and strength in a nutshell, and that is how you design a laminate that is both flexible and strong. Thanks for being here.